It's official. NOAA, the National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration, has declared it La Nina time. So many of you have heard of La El Nino, of course, because that impacts our weather more directly. La Nina is a little more hit and miss uh, in terms of its impacts on Minnesota specifically. We're going to talk a little bit more about that, but I want to talk about what it is first. So El Nino is when we have warm waters, warmer than normal waters off of the coast of South America. La Nina is the opposite. Uh, so instead of the boy, it's the girl. We have, you can see in green, purple, blue, cooler than normal waters off the coast of South America. And that means cool water for places like the Galapagos that I've been to a couple times if you follow that. And that's good news actually for some of the wildlife there because there's more nutrient rich waters for things like the uh, penguins there and uh, some of the shark species and other things that thrive on it. So what happens basically when we look at this in terms of bigger picture, you get that cool water uh, in the Eastern Pacific, because the trade winds, the winds that push across the equator along the coast there uh, and along the waters increases. And what that does is it pushes the warm water heated in that strong equatorial sun into the Western Pacific towards places like Papua New Guinea, Indonesia, Australia, and that causes upwelling, or uh, in other words, water is forced upwards from the depths of the ocean uh, along the coast of South America, and that's what cools off the water there. And it has impacts on North America's weather in terms of generally drier, warmer weather in parts of the uh, south and uh, colder, wetter weather as you head further north and west. And then there are areas that are variable. And Minnesota is kind of on the edge of this. Uh, everybody always wants to know how it affects us. This is looking back at decades of La Nina specific conditions. And you can see there are a few years where we get warmer than normal conditions and there are a few years where it's colder than normal. And it turns out that for the Twin Cities specifically, where you are kind of in the middle, it's sort of 50-50. La Nina is not a very definitive trend for us. Slightly more cooler than normal years compared to warmer than normal years. But El Nino, for example, uh, the warmer conditions, it is very slam dunk. Uh, three out of four El Nino years are warm for us, but that does mean that there's still one in four that are not. So as far as the temperature trends, we look at uh, composites and anomalies put together, all sorts of stuff. And I want you to pay attention to this lower left uh, figure basically. And you can see the Twin Cities, Southeastern Minnesota really on the edge of that slightly uh, cooler than normal trend. So does that mean winter this year is gonna be cold? Really hard to say from this one specific thing, one La Nina, because there are many factors that affect our winter since we're that far away from South America. And as far as precipitation trends, we do tend to be a little wetter. Uh, that's what you're seeing in the lower uh, section here. And it's really anybody's guess, La Nina is not a good indicator of what our winter will be because there are many things at play. Uh, but if it's the biggest influence on our winter season, it might be slightly cooler than normal. But a lot of other uh, trends in the models are moving towards a warmer winter for us. So we'll just have to see.